Disclaimer. These videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Arkansas Post, located in Arkansas County, Arkansas, on January 9th through the 11th, 1863. In an effort to regain commerce on the Mississippi River, Union General John A. McClernand and Union Navy Rear Admiral David Porter formed and led a flotilla of Union Navy ships against the Confederate Fort Hindman. Union forces or raid were comprised of 60 transports carrying more than 30,000 men, multiple wooden gunboats, and three new ironclad ships. Opposing them were the forces of the Confederate Fort Hindman. Commanded by Confederate Brigadier General Thomas J. Churchill, more than 5,000 Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana troops in a secure earthworks position 50 miles up the Arkansas River, just off the Mississippi. The fort itself had eight light artillery pieces and three heavy artillery pieces to assist in fighting off any ships coming down the river. On January 9th, the Union transports landed downriver from the fort under the command of Union General William Tecumseh Sherman and approached the fort by land, while the naval ships approached the fort to attack from the river. Confederate General Churchill was shocked that so many Union troops were being deployed, when the entire garrison was approximately 5,000 Confederates, giving the Union a 6-1 to advantage in men alone. It was at this time that he desperately requested reinforcements. The response he got from his superiors was to hold out until help arrived or until everyone in his command was dead. On January 10th, Union ships moved forward to lay a massive barrage on the fort. Porter's wooden ships, the Baron de Cobb, Louisville, and Cincinnati, moved in 400 yards, damaging much of the defensive fortifications of the fort and destroying several of the cannons the Confederates had. Meanwhile, the ironclad Rattler wasn't as careful in its approach and ended up grounding itself less than 100 yards from the fort. After this bombardment, around 1 p.m. on January 11th, General Sherman launched his attacks on the fort from land. With support from naval ships, the fort's east wall collapsed within an hour. The fighting was fierce, resulting in heavy casualties, but Sherman and his Union troops were able to reach the Confederate earthworks to dig in. Just before McClernand ordered a second wave to attack at 4 p.m., several of the Confederate units surrendered and allowed the Union forces to enter the inner portion of the fort. This forced Confederate General Churchill to surrender the fort in total. This was more than a quarter of all Confederate troops stationed in Arkansas and the biggest surrender of the Confederacy west of the Mississippi until 1865. Estimated losses were 1,092 Union soldiers, including 134 killed, 898 wounded, and 29 missing, while the Confederates suffered approximately 5,000 soldiers lost, including more than 100 killed and wounded, and the rest were captured or missing. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.